I'm Ramsey the loud one. I'm Jesse the short one. Put, Put us, us both, both into one. We are. Lots of noise, always too fast. Lots of laughs. Here's our podcast, the loud and short of it. Hi, and welcome to Loud and Short of It. I'm Ramsey, the loud one. And I'm Jesse, the short one. And this week, we've got another variety hour for you, where we'll go through five topics spanning politics to video games. My favorite. And uh, for the first time ever, I'm going to tell you the topics ahead of time, before we dive into each one. Do you know whether to hit that fucking X button or not? (laughs) (laughs) We've got uh, accessibility in video games coming up first. Then we've got Chadwick Boseman's Tragic Death. Then we've got music venues during Corona and how all of that's panning out. Then we've got all the drama around John Boyega. And then we will end on evictions throughout the U.S. Just a very happy ending, you know? It's cute. It's and it just, cute. most of this stuff, just very happy, joyful things. Yeah. Well, welcome to the world, man. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. We're tired of giving you the good news. We're just going <laughs> to give you the news. Oh, man. All right, well, kicking off on the first one, uh, we do have video games. Uh, there was an article put out by Washington Post, um video game section i don't yeah. know just be watched and post games don't be uploaded <laughs> wherever the fuck you are uh they're talking about uh, accessibility in video games which has been a huge fucking thing lately yeah um the past like four years or so uh i know because i'm a sony slut uh accessibility uh, across all sony first per- uh, party titles have been insanely good See, now this is just something that until I read this article, I had no idea that there was these improvements were being made. To yeah. my knowledge, accessibility in video games was those people that make the really cool controllers yeah. for people with like physical disabilities, but I didn't realize how much was being done. And it's, it's stuff that, if you aren't disabled, makes no difference. You barely yeah. notice it in your games. It's not really, obviously, no one's noticing it. But then if you are disabled, this is life-changing it yeah. allows you to play them the xbox adaptive controller when that came out that was the first thing where everyone was just like oh shit you know because we don't fucking think about these things it's not yeah. in front of mind for us but now it is um and one of the coolest things about these articles is that something i didn't even realize they're bringing in accessibility consultants to play their games and say how can we make this easier giving them settings and be like how can we make this easier um, and I can just tell you from the games that I've been playing recently, like Last of Us Part 2, no spoilers, but the, the entire fucking accessibility options is like, honestly, it borders on cheat code sometimes. And personally, I'm okay with it. Yeah. I think that Last of Us 2 is a game that I fucking love so much, and it kind of makes me sad to think that there are people who can't play it. Especially games like Last of Us, where I would, like, I know it's your favorite game of all time, at least the first one and probably the second one now. But for me, 80% of that game was the storyline. I didn't love I the shooting mechanics and everything else, but that game was like an eight-hour-long, beautiful movie that I was engaged in the entire time. Yeah. If the, they could have just turned it into something I didn't even have to click through, I would still have played it. Yeah, the thing is, though, like with it, part of the gameplay is essentially... It, the gameplay does serve as a story. Like it, yeah. it is the whole thing where you said it's 80% story. But, like, it adds to the suspense, and it makes you care about the characters more. You are in the story. Yeah, like, whenever fucking... It's the same thing happened with, like, Tomb Raider in 2016. Like, the, the death scenes are brutal. Yeah. Like, when your character dies, it sucks because they get fucked up. And so it adds to the attention to the story. And just now, like, instead... Because I've heard many arguments being like, well, why, can't, why don't you just watch, like, walkthroughs or whatever? Mm-hmm. And I'm always just like... Shut the fuck up. Why don't you just watch yeah. walkthroughs? <laughs> it's like, I've never watched a person play a video game in my life and given a shit. Yeah. Um, but it does kind of bleed into another thing I want to talk about with Last of Us Part 2. There are no trophies for the difficulty settings. Really? Yeah. So right now I blew through the, I blew through the story and everything. And I looked at the trophy list. It's like, oh, great. I got to beat this, beat this on fucking grounded or whatever. And there's none. Now this I cannot agree with. That's dumb. There is another article okay. <laughs> that was written about, um, Sekiro, Shadows Die Twice. Yeah. One of like the Soulsborne games. Um, we'll link to about, both articles. Yeah, talking about uh, how he feels like it just fucking sucks that people who cannot keep up with this kind of gameplay curve, like specifically speaking to disabled people, um, they can't really experience this world, which is super fucking cool. And I honestly, I'm one to agree with him. I can't disagree with that. Every, th- there should be settings that allow even anybody to play the game and finish the game. That being said, achievements, I don't feel like those need to be moved down. I, I feel like in the world of video games, if you compared it to something like movies, 
If you're comparing it to movies, fully agreed. Everyone should be able to watch every movie and experience that story and experience what it feels like to play that game. Yeah. But achievements, I would say, and I know this sounds stupid, but also fuck you. They're closer to sports. It is. Some of those are incredibly challenging. Like it just. There is. I'm sorry. Some, I keep going. Every time sports and video games get brought yeah. together, I all oh, automatically become a dumb job. It is. It is a competition. Yeah. There is something to be said that somebody can say, "I hundred percent at this game," and other people go, "Holy shit, that's crazy." Yeah. And it's not like there's plenty of games where hundred percenting the game is not a challenge, and then when somebody gets it, I'm just like, "Why did you go?" Searching for flags for eight hours, that's boring. But games but like... that's Isn't that kind of the thing, though, where like the grind is part of the love of the game? For some games, yes. But for other games, set having to beat the game on the highest difficulty with zero deaths, if that's not an achievement, I'm not going to do it. And I like having that that's there to fair. be like... It, it doesn't need to unlock anything. It's purely just a stupid tiny number that pops up next to my name. Yeah. And I don't, show, I don't go to people and say, look, look at my high score in... In Sony uh, trophy list or whatever, you showed me your high score in trophy in so many times game, in a random yeah. game that I'm uh, playing in the living room. But I, I just, agree with your sentiment. The only thing I come down on is it again hits the same like emotional chord where I think like there's because like you got to think, man. Like when we were kids, like we were blow through fucking trophy lists all the time. And right now, I'm just thinking back like fuck. There were people who couldn't get all the trophies, and it sucks. And so like I like I 100 percent agree that like. As far as the way we, like we feel on it, it's like yeah, well, you know, that sucks. But it's all it also just it, I do hit an emotional chord where I'm like, rather not exist. <laughs> it sucks to mm. think that you're not getting the full amount you can out of a game j- it, for I just reasons think, that aren't your time and uh, skill. I think as far as platinums are concerned, or hundred percenting, or whichever, whatever, whatever you're doing it on. Very few people think of, oh, you're not getting everything out of the game unless you 100% it. Most That's games fair. have horrifically dumb achievements. For example, Kill Zone 3, one of the achievements was to be in the top 10, the top 10% of players, or top 10 players in the world yeah. for two weeks straight. You had to stay in it online. No one got the that. The reason I never platinumed less, last was one, I, I did everything that you should have done for a platinum, but they had multiplayer trophies. I was like, ah. Nope, <laughs> not at all. <laughs> and you don't. That's something that you chose not to be. Like I just yeah. feel like to make the achievements easier. Those that you can get the whole story and everything from the game without needing to get these achievements. That's fair. <laughs> Still, <laughs> I'm, I, you're not. You're yeah. not going to swing me on it. I yeah. like because there's a lot of games that I. If it, if the achievement's not there, and that's just because I'm eight brained. But if the yeah. achievement's not there, I'm not gonna go and play it on super difficult and try to not die more than three times. That definitely makes sense to me. I think for me, mostly like it, it is just like the emotional, and it, it, that doesn't even matter as much as like Bloodborne. I fucking love Bloodborne, and I really fucking wish that there were cheat codes I could just put it in and be like, let <laughs> me experience this because I don't have time to grind for eighty hours and become good at this game again. That's fair. And in the, in the original article, they brought up uh, Sakuro. And yeah. I thought that was interesting because that didn't seem like that hard of a game for me or like it was trying to be the hardest game ever. So I think that that should have multiple difficulty settings. Have it, you played? That's a, that game's so hard. Really? Are you thinking, are, are you thinking of uh, Ghost of Tsushima? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Let's say. Boom. Okay. <laughs> I, had, I had my S games confused. Yeah. yeah. That makes a lot more sense. Then on that note, I think, and maybe I'm an asshole for saying this and shouldn't say it while being recorded, but there are some games whose sole purpose is to be a ridiculously challenging game, and then to add to to take that away from those games, it's like, sorry, that game is just made for a very small demographic of people. I w- I mean, I I the only reason I don't dis- I don't agree with you is because the art style and some other things, so many other things about like the lore and shit is so fucking cool. That's it just kind of blows. You can't you can't then, run through and experience the world. Then I think as a as a player of those games, I'd be completely fine with them having a difficulty setting or cheat codes yeah. or something that lets people get through it. I think every game but, should have fucking cheat codes. Yeah, that I can't <laughs> disagree with. But I still think the achievements there should be left untouched. You should still have to grind or be insanely good at the game to get those things. Mm. Well, you heard it here first. <laughs> <laughs> uh, other things to just randomly talk about from the article... Um, subtitles. Yeah. A couple games have started putting subtitles as default. Thank God. Best thing ever. Yeah. Subtitle video game. The mixes are terrible. You can't hear anything. Yeah. Second, there's oh, gunfire. The mixes. Uh-huh. Hey, I'm learning a little learning. audio nerd stuff. <laughs> um, 
But oh, the button, <laughs> the button mashing. Yes, button mashing's gone, dude. That's awesome. Yeah, I've been holding down buttons in Spider Man to like throw cars and shit instead of having to tap them. And you want our my controller's gonna last forever. Mm -hmm. And also, we're old and our dexterity is fucking yeah. going away. I mean, I can't I s take disabilities and everything out of it. There's 45 year olds and at this point, 80 year old and 85 grandma gamer. Yeah, there's people that just can't b button grandma. mash through God of War three like you used yeah, to. Yeah, except COD grandma, bro. <laughs> Okay, that's enough on that. We yeah. went way too long on uh, video games. Yeah. Let's get into Chadwick Ooh. Boseman. Yeah. Um, so, as everyone knows, Chadwick Boseman has passed away. Um, he did have cancer for, I think, since 2016 was what I read. So uh, through a lot of his most famous movies. Yeah. This where is he looks our, amazing. Ju just so I can talk about this, this is our television topic. Um, ABC aired Black Panther in its entirety on with no commercial interruptions to honor him. Um, we've seen a lot of things come out in the media about Chadwick Boseman, about how he was a very hard worker, um, how he was a hero to many people. Yeah. And this is a really fucking hard time to lose him. Um, I don't know. I just kind of wanted to talk about him and, um, you know, some of his work and shit. Cause I've just, I remember watching black Panther. Um, actually, no, I remember watching civil war. And when mm -hmm. Black Panther showed up thinking, like, this is the coolest fucking dude ever. <laughs> like, he was just kicking ass and shit. And it's just, like, to think that, like, during filming of that, he was dealing with cancer. Yeah. While he became one of the biggest fucking superheroes and, like, most important actors of all time. Like, it was, it's insane to hear about it. And I think, for me, the most impressive part of the entire story is that during all of this, it, during his massive rise to, like, as famous as... Uh, mm -hmm. of, uh, arguably as famous as you can get yeah his group never revealed that yeah. no hints no tips no bullshit tabloids yeah. talking about it i mean if there's anything to be said apart from his amazing career it's he obviously knows how to pick his friends yeah and it's it's another thing to be like it's another thing to be said as well as like the impact of you know his passing because it was like I, I literally got a fucking text from my friend Cam, and he was just like, "Hey, have you heard yet?" And I was like, "What?" Hey, you're very, yeah, yeah. I was like, "Personal." Yeah, I was like scared because yeah, but then like he texted me that, and I was like, "There's no fucking way. There's just no way." And then I looked it up, and sure enough, he passed, and it was a big shock. Um, I think the biggest thing right now to think about is that you know he was going through a horrible fucking disease, and he churned out some awesome fucking movies. He did some amazing work. Even on his press junkets, he was out there. And he, he's a fucking... He's an inspiration to people. Yeah. And it, it is a especially massive... Especially young kids. Yeah, especially young African-American kids, especially in this year. Yeah. And it's it's a loss. And we saw the same thing with Kobe Bryant um, when he passed. Oh, man, I'm getting more emotional than I thought I would. <laughs> um, but, yeah, just... Uh, and we want to talk about the... the you, you never fucking see what someone's going through and how tight his circle was. Yeah. I don't know, man. I feel like I had to talk about it some way. It would have been a shitty variety. I would just act like this didn't happen. Yeah. Um, but you know, if you're if you're at home right now, go watch the Five Bloods. Um, watch Forty Two. Um, watch his Marvel shit too. But like, just know that this man was was so varied. And holy shit, dude, he was just, he was gonna be the next fucking big guy. I swear to God, dude, mm -hmm. it's such a fucking bummer. I think he did become the big guy. Dude, uh, yeah, but this <laughs> I mean, thing is like we yeah. we saw him and like like looking back, compare maybe it's not a great comparison like Denzel Washington like Denzel Washington even right now like from his youth to now is like he's he's massive and Chadwick yeah. Boseman would have got there he would maybe surpassed him he was front of mind for fucking everyone and it, it's it sucks dude it's it's fu it's fucking horrible um but from here on honestly just looking at his legacy like the man made his fucking mark and I, yeah. it's incredibly impressive. Um, that's all I got on that. Jesse, you want to take Yeah, that? I'll move it off. Yeah. Uh, then we got music venues. So, um, if you read the article, I assume most people aren't, they'd rather just hear yeah. us talk about the <laughs> articles. Um, music venues are obviously getting hit incredibly hard with Corona. Uh, no one's going to concerts because you can't, um, no, nobody's selling beer there, using it for yeah. other purposes because a lot of states have that banned and for good reason. Um, but that doesn't excuse the fact that they're has been some help to small businesses, which is what a lot of music venues are, but not yeah. enough. Um, one of the things as well on this is that uh, 
uh, Barracuda in Austin has shut down, which yeah. is, sucks ass. That was it's the scary. Last. How many more yeah. local places in Austin we're gonna lose? That's that was the last place I went. Um, I went to go see Beach Bunny, and it was one oh, of the man. best fucking nights of my life. And now they're closing down. Um, but another thing is like you know getting back right back into politics. Um, we talked last time on Variety Hour. We talked about how Congress shut down. Yeah. There were bills in place, apparently, to fucking help music venues, which, you mm-hmm. know, the Clobinator helped with, you know, <laughs> one good thing she's done. Yeah. Um, and it, it just, it fucking sucks now that, you know, we're, we're at a point where the article that we're, uh, that I put up there is that we're kind of at a point where it's risking that these venues are getting bought out by corporate interests. That's the biggest problem is uh, this, you see this in real estate, you see this everywhere. It's whenever pandemics like this happen or bubbles burst it's not berkshire hathaway it's not Ticketmaster. it's not these massive uh international conglomerates that go yeah. down it's mom and pop shops and they don't just disappear and don't exist they get bought out and then you just have more and more completely corporate owned music venues corporate owned apartment buildings corporate owned houses like it's just it's this never-ending struggle when the government doesn't do its job of regulating the markets yeah. that we see every every local institution that we have just slowly gets plundered. Yeah, dude, and it's just it's weird too because you think about like the thought of like a local venue being bought out by a corporate uh, like a corporation like that just feels gross. Yeah, like when you go to fucking Staples Center or whatever to see Justin Bieber, I don't know what the fuck you do, <laughs> but like that I, that is a very different experience than going and seeing a local band, a local show. You know, yeah. now like or even bigger bands at local venues yeah. is always just a more fun experience. It's it, smaller, it's more personal. Yeah, and it's just it's it's another thing where it, it's a fucking annoying because like the last thing we need in music right now is for it to get more corporate. Because right now we already have fucking like what's the shitty ticket place? It's the most obvious one. Ticketmaster. Ticketmaster's yeah. Ticket fucking they're buying out indie shows and shit. I had to buy a B twenty ticket off of fucking Ticketmaster. Yeah. Um oh dude, it's it's another thing where it's like I'm just scared that 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 this is going to be their new reality, at least for a little while, until the country picks back up again. Yeah, and I know some cities, Austin has, obviously not enough for Barracuda, but Austin has been desperately trying to help out small local music venues and local bars with direct help. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, there's only so much I mean, that you can... We're the fucking live music capital of the world. Yeah. Imagine what's happening in other places who this isn't their they goddamn... Have, they have one or two branding. music venues yeah. in their town, and, that like, how can they survive during this time? Yeah. Which we'll get more into how they could have survived uh, for our last topic of the day. Yeah. But, in general, this is just... There's nothing... Well, there are, but... If you assume that COVID had to happen at the extent that it has, if we take that bold assumption, um, the government is derelict and not doing its job. It yeah. should be the the first and foremost thing that they should be doing is keeping people and in, in small businesses safe. Yeah. During pandemics that those businesses and those people had no control over. Yeah. And now look, look where we are. They're being bought out by corporations who yeah. are getting government help. No kidding. Um. Yeah, so that's not good. If there's any way you can support your local music venue, I'm gonna be honest, there's not a lot. I haven't I've seen heard that shit. some are doing. You can buy like chips or other ways, like gift cards, basically yeah. that you can so that when things open back up, you'll be able to go in for free. Yeah, and I um, guess like you know, do that. Another thing is like not to get off of the venues and shit, but like again, there's not a ton that you can do. Uh, if you have a favorite band that's not huge, buy their merch. Yeah, I bought I bought like five CDs or some shit and gave them to my siblings and I was like, here, these are great. And they were like, why'd you give me a fucking CD? CDs. And I was like, I gotta be honest, I had to buy something. Yeah, <laughs> I only wear black T-shirts. I think uh, the only other thing that I'll say on this before we move on is to like, and this sounds cheesy as fuck, but cherish the times that you have at any local venue. Yeah, because chances are. Um, and I know I'm saying that as somebody that lives in a town with 8 million local places, I haven't eaten at a non-local place in well over a year. Yeah. Um, but everybody's got to have some small local place that they love. Yeah. Cherish that place because it might not be there forever. Yeah. But, yeah. <laughs> Let's get into the next one. This is a tough one this yeah, week. Yeah, this is a... This is a not a great week for yeah. this or month. Now I get to talk about my favorite thing on Earth. This which, one is good. Which is Star Wars. But you want know That's not actually my favorite thing on Earth. My <laughs> favorite thing on Earth is shitting on Star Wars. John Boyega is the fucking man. I'll mm-hmm. say it now. I'll say it a thousand times. Let me pull up my notes here. Uh, John Boyega recently uh, did an interview with GQ. 
and where he kind of just opened up on Disney with his treating of his uh, the treatment of his character in the recent Star Wars trilogy. Yeah, which I think people don't appreciate how much balls it takes to shit on Disney. Oh, Multi-millionaires yeah. won't shit on Disney because of the power that Disney holds over the future of people's careers. Yeah, uh, and John Boyega is like, I don't know, man. He's something else. When he showed up, everyone just fucking loved him, and the youth loved him, but he he didn't feel like a super corporate dude, and that's why it was super exciting to see him shit on Disney. Um, yeah. Essentially, quick rundown. Um, in the three Star Wars movies, John Boyega played Finn, who was a huge source of chagrin from a bunch of racist assholes who liked Star Wars. Um, he was a black stormtrooper. They said he shouldn't have been there. Uh, now, Disney, we thought, was saying, oh, no, fuck them. He's going to be one of the main characters. And in the first movie, he had a lightsaber and everything. And then in the second movie, he got sidelined. And in the third movie, he got sidelined even worse. And it fucking sucked because he's a really cool character. Um, moving into that, what he had to say was that uh, what he... Uh, what I would say to Disney is to not bring out a black character, market them to be much more important to the franchise than they are, and then have them pushed to the side. It's essentially what I just said. Yeah. Um, but the fact that he said that right at Disney in a GQ <laughs> interview, mm -hmm. intentionally, very impressive. Yeah. Uh, and th I mean, this isn't the first time that he's spoken up. This is the first time he's spoken up against Disney and Star Wars, but he was at different protests, yeah. giving speeches for Black Lives Matter and other associated... Uh, progressive causes or yeah. humane it, causes. Yeah, they gave him like a, a megaphone and like off the cuff, he just like fucking killed it. Yeah, I remember like scroll. It's built different. Yeah, he's he's a different breed, man. Um, another thing he was talking about was uh, he said that uh, his character was not nuanced at all. He essentially just ran around and screamed Ray, Ray, um, and he did say that all the nuance went to Adam Driver and Daisy Ridley, which this kind of hurts me, but I have to say. It, Adam Driver got completely fucking just, like, put over every other character in that trilogy. Yeah. And it's fucking terrible that it happened to John Boyega, because John Boyega is just as much of a talent. Mm -hmm. And it's a, it's it's super annoying. And you even see now, like, what is Adam Driver in? Everything under the fucking sun. Yeah. Everything under the fucking sun. You can say it wasn't from Star Wars, but if you do, you're kind of a dipshit. Um, and then John Boyega is like, John Boyega is getting work. He's doing well, but it's just like, this should have been more for him and yeah. it's not fair john boyega's character and concept should is just another thing of waste potential where it should have been this huge thing where everyone is excited about um also he went on to defend jj abrams because uh ryan johnson who directed the second movie kind of fucked everything up for finn i still like that movie but it did fuck <laughs> everything up for finn but uh yeah I got. I'm mostly just excited about that one because it is a big actor saying fuck you to star wars and yeah i'm it, hoping that this doesn't hurt him like it's obviously going to with yeah. within certain spheres and within Disney, but I'm hoping that there's plenty of other studios that are like, yeah, fuck Disney. I uh, see. The thing is, I think Disney's best move here is to fucking be like, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, like we definitely did. Yeah. Um, because just right now, I feel like Can you if find an example over the last 150 years of Disney apologizing for something, not at all. But I generally, their move is to take all their racist cartoons and hide them. That seems I to agree. be their move is just to push that down and wait 15 years and I, no one will remember. I said best move. No, what they're gonna do, <laughs> what they're gonna do is is fucking ignore it until oh. I do get to talk about Mandalorian Season 2. <laughs> Disney announced Mandalorian Season 2 to drown out John Boyega talking shit about Star Wars. Oh, really? Happened the same day. It was very fucking irritating. Jesus. You saw the Star Wars hashtag, and it was all John Boyega kicks ass because he's shitting on people, and then a few hours later it was like, Mandalorian Season 2, you'd see Baby Yoda. And I was like, man, one thing I thought wow. I'd be celebrating, I was kind of grossed out by. That's insane. But um, honestly, I'm taking this one. I have hope for this one. This one made me happy. John Boyega, you kick ass, man. Yeah. You're a fucking hero to the people. Excited to see the future. Yeah, fuck you, Disney. We'll never sell. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we will. <laughs> then we'll just restart it. We'll restart it right away. The loud mouse of it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the mouse's house. <laughs> That's what we're calling it. Oh, man. Get oh. us for that copyright. Fuck you, Disney. <laughs> What's our last one, Jesse? Our last one is uh, back to a very unhappy thing to end on. Oh, but Lord. I would wager to say it's one of the most important things that needs to be talked about for this fucking year. Yeah. One of. One of. There's plenty more of other important Wars? things. More than Star Wars, oh, probably. Well. I'd, I'd wager <laughs> saving more than John Boyega. Um, <laughs> Wait. And that is evictions. Yeah. Um, before we get into this, 
uh, just in case we have any listeners that either didn't read the article, don't know, and then after that are assholes. Um, 40 million Americans right now, uh, depending on which article you read, it's anywhere between 25 and 45 million Americans. That's more than 10% of all Americans. And that's not even, potentially doesn't include the children and unaccounted for uncensused individuals. Um, they have eviction notices. Yeah. So they could be, they don't have, they're not secure in their homes. Um, and that's not even including homeless people. Yeah. That is an insane amount of people. These are not, and, and down to my, if you're an asshole, these aren't people that didn't work hard. These aren't people that made dumb decisions. These aren't people that lived outside of their means. These aren't people that took on extra debt that they shouldn't have taken on. These are fucking normal, well-adjusted, did-the-best-they-fucking-could yeah. Americans that because of COVID lost their jobs. Now don't get unemployment any or the $600 extra unemployment anymore. Yeah. Can't get another job that's going to cover anywhere reasonable amount of rent because m- the minimum wage is seven fucking seven twenty five an yeah. hour. And the other thing, too, is even if they were people who did all those things or who didn't do all those things right, there's still fucking 40 million people going yeah. homeless. There's a fucking there's a line in the sand we have to start drawing here where, like, if you do not think that this is one of the biggest problems right now, like this, because this is fucking horrible. There's no 40 million people kidding. out on the street. If you're not looking at this going, we need to fix this by giving people homes, you're, I, I'm sorry, you gotta be a shitty person. Yeah. And if you haven't realized it yet, there you are. <laughs> yeah, you, you are the <laughs> shitty person. Now, this being said, I'm not one of these people that is going to shit on Donald Trump every fucking time that he does anything. Sometimes he does things right. Every every fucking idiot's right every once in a while. And so far, he seems to be doing something right here. Or as, as good as... As, as good, good as we could expect him to do. Him to do, yes. Yeah. He has talked with the CDC and is working because the CDC obviously is trying to control this disease. And fucking 10% of Americans becoming homeless in the next month would certainly cause the spread of that fucking disease. Yeah. Uh, he's working to pause evictions through the rest of this year. It's now, not enough. <laughs> I know somebody's just going to cut if, if somebody's just going to cut that part out of me saying this is a good thing. That's still a piece of shit thing cuz all you're doing is kicking the can down the fucking road. Yeah. That just means in January instead of 40 million Americans you're going to have 45 million or 60 million Americans yeah ready to be fucking evicted. And the other thing too is like even with the an eviction freeze or anything Having an eviction on your record is bad. Yeah, it is. It is hard to find housing if you have an eviction on your record. I've I've been I've looked at apartments and they've said if you have one eviction, we're not taking you. Yeah, it's fucking terrible. This also back to the corporate versus small local. I'm not I'm not gonna come out here and defend landlords like they're the ones that are getting fucked in this situation. Obviously, the first the first and foremost thing should be making sure no one becomes homeless. But there is this massive problem of people can't pay their fucking rent. We need a rent freeze. And with that rent freeze, we also need a mortgage freeze. Yeah. Because even even these big companies and the small landlords that may they may have bought a house as a retirement plan in their sixties, yeah, um, they still have to pay the mortgage whether somebody's paying rent or not because there's not a freeze. So people yeah. are going to lose their homes, and who's going to buy those homes? The giant apartment buildings they have no problem paying right now. They've got stocks and stocks and everything saved up over the years. It's investing season for them, and yeah. it's fucking disgusting. They could, if somebody was renting a home out for a reasonable price, no one could pay the rent there. They lost the house to a foreclosure. Now that home is owned by a giant bank who evicts the family that was living there without any kind of reasonable human interaction of, well, can you pay this much? How yeah. can I work with you while you're unemployed? There's not the the problem is that there's one side of it looking at is okay well this is a huge problem we need to help people and there's another side being like eh, it's not happening to me yeah and it, it's it's just like like you said before this isn't something they could have outworked yeah this isn't something you no, no one, one could do this I, I'm I have savings I have some savings I don't have Corona savings like you know like if something bad happens where they were like okay you're being evicted tomorrow nobody fucking has that yeah. They, they, it's also very easy to have savings, and this is coming from the two of us. It's very easy to have savings when you're a middle 20s individual with parents that were well off. Yeah. That's an easy setup. If you have kids, your, your, your first goal is not to set up an extra fucking eight months of rent yeah. to be sure you're set. Your first goal is to get your kids a decent education yeah. and kept, keep them fed and happy. And also, it's just like when your profession is like, 
you know, if if you're working in the rest or the service industry, which is a it's a perfectly fine fucking profession for an adult to have. Yeah, I've had this argument a ton of times. Like, it's ridiculous to me that like right now in a time where someone whose profession and career is going that trajectory, where they can't, they literally cannot work. There's not empathy being put forward to them, and the best that we're getting is that well, we're not going to evict you this year. Yeah. And this is what I want to end this week on, even though it's just kind of a ranting note and not the most useful. If there was ever a fucking time for the Democratic establishment to fucking win an election that they say is so goddamn important, and it fucking is, Joe Biden, come out right now and say that if you were president, you would put a ban on mortgages or a, a pause on mortgage payments. You would put a pause on rent payments until this was over. Or if that's too big of a fucking leap and you don't want to make that leap, come out and say that you would be for a full UBI, a $2,000 a month until this was over for every single American over 18 and extra for people with kids. It's fucking horrifying that these are just easy moves that he's it, not going for, huh? I don't believe anybody in the political sphere that says this is the most important election of all time that isn't for those things. Because if it was, you wouldn't be worried about what spent political capital that was going to cause or what it might do a year from now. You would win the fucking election by giving the people what they fucking need. Because I've got a little update for you. People that are getting evicted don't fucking vote. They have more important things to deal with. You cannot expect somebody that's facing homelessness in their near future to vote for you. Also, if you bring up political capital, you have too much money. <laughs> you're, you're a piece of shit. <laughs> um, I just I think it's about having a realistic mindset on um, just what people are going through and not not th- this this fucking fairy tale that some people live in when it comes to politics. Yeah. Um. So that being said, I know that there are some groups that have been going around and helping people that are currently being evicted. I know there are accounts on Twitter you can follow where you can send your money instead of to some giant fundraising campaign that it gets spread around. You can just directly send it to people in trouble if you're the kind of person that has that disposable income. Um, And outside of that, to end on a ranty note, like we've ended a lot of episodes, if you have it in you and you're not uh, at risk for COVID, go protest and go vote. Go do both. Because something needs to fucking change. And it doesn't look like it's going to start at the top. It's going to start with local elections yeah. and with local homegrown political movements. Yeah. That is our episode for the week. Yeah. I liked it. I'm not going <laughs> to lie. I know it seemed dour, but I feel like we got to talk about a lot of things that are important right now. It was mm-hmm. a big month for news. Um, but again, thank you for listening. And as the man said, go vote and go fucking protest. Yep. Yep. <laughs>